Ever been to a hotel where they give you a key card instead of a real key? That's kind of like OAuth 2.0. Let me explain. OAuth 2.0 is like a digital key card you get at a hotel. Instead of handing over your master password, you're given a key card that grants limited access, just to your room. But depending on what you're allowed, that same card might also let you use the elevator, enter the spa, or access other specific facilities. It's all about giving just the right level of access, no more, no less. Let's take a real-life example. You've probably heard of Notion, or maybe you're already using it. But if not, it's a popular note-taking and productivity app with some pretty advanced organization tools built in. Now imagine you're setting up Notion and want to do something helpful like import your Google Calendar events so your deadlines stay in sync, but you don't want to hand over access to your Gmail, Google Drive, or any private data. So how does that work? You head over to calendar.notion.so and click on Continue with Google. At this point, Notion lets you know that it needs access to your Google Calendar and possibly your contacts too. But don't worry, they won't see your contacts unless you give explicit permission. Why ask for contacts in the first place? Notion. Calendar might use them to auto-complete names when you invite people to events, or to help connect meetings with people in your network more easily. Now, you're redirected to Google's own login screen. This is important. This part is fully controlled by Google, not by Notion. You either pick your account or log in if you're not already signed in. Next, Google shows you exactly what Notion Calendar is asking for. This includes things like viewing and editing your calendar events, managing your calendars, accessing your calendar settings, seeing your contacts, and viewing your basic profile info, like your name and email address. The good news? You're in control. You can choose to grant all permissions or just a few. If you want the full Notion Calendar experience, selecting all of them is recommended. But if you're more privacy conscious, feel free to allow only what you're comfortable with. Once you're ready, click Continue to move forward. Google generates a secure OAuth token like a digital keycard. That token gets passed to Notion Calendar, and it only gives access to the specific things you approved. No password is shared, and Notion never sees more than what you allowed. Why this matters? The security win. Your Google password stays private. Access is limited to calendar and contact data, nothing more. You can revoke access anytime. You might think, what if Notion Calendar gets hacked? Even in a worst case scenario, all the attacker would get is the token. That token can't be used to log in as you can't access your Gmail, Drive, or photos. Is limited, short-lived, and can be revoked. Your main Google account stays protected. So next time you connect an app, not just to Google, but to any platform, take a moment to check what it's actually asking for. If it's requesting full access to your email, files, or contacts, and there's no good reason for it, don't just blindly click Allow. That's a red flag. OAuth is designed to help you share access securely without giving away the keys to your entire digital life. But it only works if you stay aware and in control. So be smart, be selective, and remember, you can always revoke access later if something doesn't feel right. If you found this helpful, check out my other videos. Thanks for watching and see you next time.